Apple bottom make you wanna buy. You can have anybody, any money, both. No, 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 do, 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 do. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to Books by Brick TV. I'm your host, Brick, and we're back with another video. Yay! We're gonna be doing our first haul of 2023. Yay! And I feel like it's probably been a year since I've done one. But I was at Target today, and I said, um, I walked over to the book section. Usually, I try to go buy books at Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million, um, Lighthouse Books, um, you know, at bookstores, right? Like mom and pops or large corporations. I try not to buy any books on Amazon because we need to keep our bookstores open, right? So anyway, I was in Target just browsing, being nosy, looking at the, um, what they call them records, the vinyl records. And I saw these books over there and I said, you know what, Rick, girl, go ahead and splurge a little bit. And I picked them up. And the books that I actually picked up, y'all, you probably already read them, but I haven't read any of these books. Like, um, excuse me. For the most part, the books that I have, um, well, all of the books here, I just be seeing pictures of them on Instagram and, um, or here, you know, just seeing pictures of them on Instagram or on, on YouTube. And I never wanted to click on a video because I didn't want to get an opinion about the book from someone else and then incorporate that into my own video or own thoughts about reading the book before I, um, actually read it. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about reading all of them, right? And y'all look. Y'all know Target be having some good sales on their book. So, like, every last one was 20% off, and your girl needed that discount. Ooh, one was actually 30% off. But, yeah, every last one of them was 20% off, y'all. So, let's get started. Such a Fun Age by hmm, Kylie Reed. And it says it is a part of Reese's Book Club. Ooh, I need to find out who Reese is. And is long listed for the 2020 Booker Prize. Another one, I think I seen Julesy and these SBG or Smart Brown Girl Book Club reading it, but um, I don't think I I haven't read it, but I don't think I really like. I probably watched them do something with it, but I know I didn't read any reviews of it. But let's read the back of it, shall we? Because I ain't even um, y'all let me tell you, I ain't even read the back of the book or the synopsis of the books any of these books when I bought them. I just said, you know what, Brittany, you've been seeing these books floating around. Just go ahead and buy them since you're right here. You get a little discount. So, oh, it's a best book of the year by the Washington Post, Chicago Tribune, NPR, Vogue, and Style, Real Simple, L, Good Housekeeping Parade. Okay, Slate, Lit Hub, Mother Jones, Vox, Kirkus Reviews, Library Journal, Book Page. All right, go ahead, Kyla Reed. And it says, Alex Chamberlain is a woman who gets what she wants and has made a living showing other women how to do the same. So she is shocked when her babysitter, Amira Tucker, is confronted while watching a Chamberlain's daughter one night in the aisles of that high-end supermarket. The store security guard, seeing a young black woman out late with a white child, accuses Amira of kidnapping. A small crowd gathers, a bystander films everything, and Amira is furious and humiliated. Alex resolves to fix to make things right. Um, but Amira herself is aimless, broke, and wary of Alex's desire to help. At 25, she's about to lose her health insurance and has no idea what to do with her life. When the video of Amira unearths someone from Alex's past, both women find themselves on a crash course that will up in everything they think they know about themselves and each other. Oh! A funny, fast-paced social satire about privilege in America. reading this book because like I said Julesy who I love to death or I admire she talked about this book and y'all know I didn't watch the video but I thought that this book was going to be about a woman <laughs> reclaiming her sexual <laughs> reclaiming her um sexual identity or something like that you know being sexually free I had no idea <laughs> this was the back of it huh Maybe I should have read this part at least before I read it. Like I said, y'all, I just picked them up based on stuff I seen on social media. That's annoying. Except for this book, this next one. It is Black Phone by The Black Phone by Joe Hill. And my I'm about to call that man my boyfriend. Uh, my boyfriend and I. We watched this book, I think, over the I mean, we watched the movie over the summer, and it was so freaking good. He used to love watch thrillers, and I could be like, you know. I don't sleep good, and if I read something like that, it, it, I'd be up all night. So anyway, it says, Jack Finney is 13, alone, and in desperate trouble. For two years now, 
Someone has been stalking the boys of Galesburg, stealing them away, never to be seen again. And now Finney finds himself in danger of joining them, locked in a psychopath's basement, a place stained with the blood of half a dozen murdered children. With him in his subterranean cell is an antique phone, long since disconnected, but it rings at night anyway, with calls from the killer's previous victims, and they are dead set on making sure that what happened to them doesn't happen to Finney. The Blackstone is one of 15 stories in Joe Hill's first story collection, the inventive and chilling compendi compendium that established this award-winning, critically acclaimed best-selling author as a major player in 21st century fantastic fiction. Okay. I'm actually looking forward to reading this, but y'all remember, I had said in a previous video that when I watched Pet Cemetery in high school, I had to get my little brother to come sleep with me because I was scared to sleep alone. <laughs> I think I would have to read this when someone is in the house with me because as much as I love thrillers and scary books, y'all, I don't sleep good after reading them. And I be feeling like somebody's in the house out to get me. So I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't read this alone. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to reading this because like I said, I really enjoyed the book. Um, I forget the main character, the main actor in the movie, but it was a really good movie. All right, this next book is another one. I don't know who I saw this on. This I think I saw this on, um, I think I saw this on Books A Million, Books A Million, no, Barnes & Noble's Carol Woods Instagram page, um, posted this. They actually posted this book a lot, and it's called Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, and it says Smart and Sexy, I Absolutely Love It by Jody Pico. Okay, go ahead, my sister's keeper, and it's a Reese's Book Club as well. Child, who is Reese? Y'all, you know what? I'm trying to start a little channel reviewing books, and I don't even know the major players in this book club team. I need to find out who Reese is. But it says, seven days to fall in love, 15 years to forget, and seven days to get it all back again. Eva Mercy is a single mom and best-selling erotica writer who is feeling pressed from all sides. Shane Hill is a reclusive, award-winning novelist who, to everyone's surprise, shows up in New York. When Shane and Eva meet unexpectedly at a black literary event, sparks fly. But what no one knows is that 15 years earlier, teenage Eva and Shane spent one crazy, torrid week madly in love and have been secretly writing to each other in their books ever since. <gasps> Over the next seven days, amidst a steamy Brooklyn summer, Eva and Shane reconnect, but Eva's wary of the man who broke her heart. Before Shane disappears again, she needs a few questions answered. With his keen observations of creative life in America today, as well as the joys and complications of being a mother and daughter, Seven Days in June is a hilarious, romantic, and sexy as hell story of two writers discovering their second chances. Second chance at love. Oh, y'all, this sounds promising. Oh, I can't wait to read this. One second. Y'all know it. I'm really looking forward to this. You know what? I'm going to do a quick sneak peek in a book. Okay. I thought it was going to be in Epis. Oh, I can't think of that form. But the same form that the color purple and um, upstate is in, where it's basically a book comprised of um, letters written to each other or to. And the color purple was written to God, and then the book Upstate, it was two lovers writing to each other. One was in prison, and the other one was out. Huh, I can't wait to read that, y'all. I don't know which one I want to read first. Oh, my God. Here is another Reese's Book Club. Oh, 20% off. And it is called Where the Crawl Dad Sings by Delia Owens. And I don't know, but, y'all, I've been seeing this book online since probably, I don't know, 2020 or 2019. But I feel like I've been seeing this book for the for the longest online with everyone talking about it and i don't know but anyway it says for years rumors of the marsh girl have haunted barkley cove a quiet town on the north carolina coast so in late 1969 when handsome chase andrews is found dead the locals immediate immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh girl. But Kaya is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the goals and lessons in the sand. When the time comes, then the time comes where she yearns to be touched and loved. When two young men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty, Kaya opens herself up to a new life until the unthinkable happens. <gasps> Ooh, y'all, I can't wait to read this. Okay, let me tell y'all something. Oh, it's the worldwide sensation. It's definitely a worldwide sensation because 
You know what? I believe even my um family has been talking about this book for at least a year. I know that because my um cousin had it with her this summer when my grandmother was in the hospital last summer. So anyway, y'all, you know how like you some books seem like they're related to each other and they could be by totally different authors. For example, um, oh, it just flew out of my head. Yes. If you ever read the book, um, um, Tumbling, my favorite book on earth, one of my favorite books by Diana Whetstone McKinney, I always thought that, um, um, Daphne from The Third Life of Grange Copeland by Alice Walker, I always thought that they were the same person in different times periods, Daphne and um, Liz from Tumblr. And where the crowd had seen while I was reading the back of this, um, it just brought me to mind of B.C. Andrews, um, Gabrielle Landry. Hey, what's her name? Tarnished Gold from the Ruby series. Um, the Ruby's birth mom, who was like, you know, this little marsh girl and always floating around with her long red hair everywhere. But that's what it brought uh, to mind. Of, and I am really looking forward to reading this. Now this next book, y'all. I'm looking forward to reading it. But the title alone just kind of been putting me off since I first saw this book floating around. And it's called I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Let's see. Is this a Reese Book Club? No, it says a Simon and Schuster book. Oh, she ain't on nobody book club. Mm. Let me read the title, the inside of y'all. Then we'll get down into a, a few things. Um, Jeanette McCurdy was six years old when she had her first acting audition. Her mother's dream for her only daughter to be was her mother's dream was for her only daughter to become a star, and Jeanette would do anything to make her mother happy. So she went along with what mom called calorie restriction, eating little and weighing herself five times a day. She endured extensive at-home makeovers while mom chided, your eye eyelashes are invisible, okay? You think the coat of, the coat of fanning doesn't tint hers? She was even showered by mom until age 16 and was also forced to share her diaries, email, and her entire income. And I'm glad my mom died. Ugh. Jeanette recounts all of this in unflinching de detail just as she chronicles what happens when a dream finally comes true. Cast in a new Nickelodeon series called iCarly, she is thrust into fame. Though mom is ecstatic, emailing fan club moderators and getting on a first name basis with the paparazzi. Hi, Gail. Jeanette is riddled with anxiety, shame, and self-loathing, which manifests into eating disorders, addiction, and a series of unhealthy relationships. These issues only get worse when soon after taking the lead in the iCarly spinoff, Sam and Kat, alongside Ariana Grande, her mother dies of cancer. Finally, after after discovering therapy and quitting acting, Jeanette embarks on recovery and decides what and decides for the first time in her life what she really wants. Told with refreshing candor and dark humor, I'm glad my mom died is an inspired story of resilience, independence, and the joy of shampooing your own hair. Okay. Okay, it says her essays have appeared in Huff Post and the Wall Street Journal. Her one woman show, I'm glad my mom died, have had sold two sold out runs at the Lyric Hyperion Theater and Hudson Theaters in Los Angeles. She also hosts a podcast called Empty Me Inside, which has taught Apple charts and features guests speaking about uncomfortable topics. She lives in Los Angeles. Okay, y'all. As someone who had, uh, I want to say acrimonious, but I'm going to just say acrimonious. <laughs> Uh, relationship with her mom from 12 to 16. Y'all, puberty was hell on earth for me because um, I also suffer from um, PMDD, endometriosis, and PCOS. All of it was undiagnosed. And so my emotions would go up and down. But I was really off put by the title of this book. I'm glad my mom died. Like, me and my mom is closer than ever now. And I'm so grateful that we had like time to work on our relationship and cultivate our relationship it's what it is now because that's my home girl my confidant my nurse my doctor my lawyer my assistant my um my legal advisor she's everything to me so when i saw this 
title of this book, like saying that I'm glad my mom died. I said, I don't even want to know what she went through or what she about because she should say that about her mom. But after just reading this here synopsis and where she said the joy of shampooing your own hair and her mom made her shower, her mom showered her until she was 16. Maybe she got a, you know, she got a right to say what she, she has to say. You know, y'all, I don't think I need to read this this weekend because I am going out of town. I'm going to be around a whole bunch of family this weekend, so I don't think I need to read this at all. But I'm curious to see why she titled this book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. And y'all, I think this is her. That can't be her mother's ashes. That's a picture. But it looked like this is a picture of her holding an urn of her mother's ashes. Ooh, Jeanette. I ain't watch um, iCarly or Sam and Cat. You know, I was off of it. Well, I was still watching Nickelodeon by the time R. Carly and True Jackson VP came out. But I was still just into like, I think I had started watching reality TV by then, like America's Next Top Model. Um, I ain't watch America Idol like that. What else? Um, Are You the Girl on the Road to Stardom? Stuff like that. So I, I don't really know much about iCarly or whoever. But y'all, that's it. Y'all, I'm looking forward to reading these books and sharing them with you guys. Drop down in the comments if y'all. Oh, shoot. Y'all, this is water, not wine. It's just a cute little wine goblet. And drop down in the comments and tell me if you guys have read any of these books. And what are you guys going to be reading for the next month? Because I'm so excited, y'all. We're back with the jump off. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Books by Brit. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.